correction. The film, the only film that we've looked at since Monday has been on the Bengals. So there's a lot of corrections. Um, a lot of things we'll have to do better. And uh, excited for the opportunity to start start working on those things. Does Peter <clears throat> have a chance to maybe get back this week? Doing a lot more. So uh, that's been good. You know, just his, um, you know, just overall demeanor and feeling better and, and what he's been able to do as far as in the weight room and just, you know, conditioning and, you know, eating and, and just getting stronger and getting healthier. You talk about watching the Bengals. I mean, I guess, I guess Burrow and his mobility on Monday seemed like somewhat limited, but he made a lot of throws. Do you plan for that Burrow or for an improved uh, mobility? Uh, you know, I mean, we'll just see how it goes in the game. I mean, we have to be prepared for, for what they do, um, you know, just from a speed and a timing perspective um you know he was able to extend some plays they they you know he got out on the edge a few times and uh, again i don't know if he'll you know scramble the way that he did or you know run a quarterback draw like he did against atlanta last year and empty i you know i don't know we'll have to see how it goes but i know that you know there's a lot of precision and timing uh to what they do offensively and uh a lot of skill when you look at jamar chase and his play strength how much more of a focus is it to like stay over top and, and, and wrap up and tackle? Him well, we'll have to know where he's at. You know, they do a great job of moving him around and getting him the football, getting him the football uh, quickly. Uh, sometimes they they obviously target him down the field. There's there's ways that they get him in the ball. They moved him in at number three the other night and you know ran you know pretty much just a slot out and you know was wide open. Uh, but they'll also use him. You know, out of the backfield, you know, sending them out. They had some guys free there in Cleveland when they, you know, pumped it to them and, and got a guy, to, you know, down the seam there, and they weren't able to hit it. But, you know, they're they're using, you know, what he has and what his skill set is very well. How much more are you guys able to do maybe in the in the quick game and in the short game to combat some of the pass rush issues? Um, well, that's based on coverage. I mean, if you're seeing, you know, you know, tight match coverage, quick game isn't going to be great. I mean, you're going to have to win pretty quick or or go upstairs. So, um, you know, that'll always be something that we'll, we'll want to do. But, you know, based on coverage, it probably dictates where you go with football and quick game. Do you think that Andre could handle Trey Hendrickson one-on-one in this matchup? Well, there'll be times where he'll be singled up. There'll be times where, you know, they'll have help. Um, you know, we'll just see what the game plan is, what the call is. You know what what the call is predicated. What you guys see from Justin Murray, you know, maybe in camp, and what do you think that his skill set brings to the to the line there? I mean, Justin's been here, you know, since since camp, and you know, we've elevated him a couple times, and you know, it's a good time to put him on a roster. He's you know been versatile. He's played you know inside, played outside. He's been a swing tackle here a couple games. Uh, They've been ready to go when, when we needed them. We haven't really needed them yet, but, um, you know, I kind of like where his attitude is, like who he is. Does he go right side only, or, or do you think he could go both sides? Well, I mean, he's a swing tackle, so hopefully uh, if we needed him, you know, we'd be able to put him over there. Does a guy like Crunchshank just kind of fit back in and pick up where he left off uh, when he was here? Well, there's been some ago. defenses between here and you know, stops, so, you know. Just had some some guys, you know, put Mike Brown on IR. So Dane Dane's done good things for us when he's been here. We'll see how much he can understand and and what what his role may or may not be. He's on the practice squad right now. Mike, how concerned are you with kind of the the discipline issues on defense right now? Um, I guess which what, what are you talking about specifically when you relate relates to discipline? Uh, busted coverages, losing men, roughing the passer penalties, like Arden's the other. Yeah, that you know, I mean, those. I think, you know, that's um, you, know, you look at it a couple of different ways. The the play down the field. There was actually two penalties on that play. I thought Christian was was challenging, and whether the, he hooked him or the ball got there, and at the same time they they called DPI. I think they called it. But the but the one that you know, I guess we're continuing to um, emphasize and, and stress is is just the. You know, ability to to match the quarterback's hand, or to uh, not hit him in the head or neck in the pocket or out of the pocket. 
you know. So we had the one with Aziz and in Arden. Um, again, Jeff had one, and Jeff's doing exactly what we coached him to do, and I, and I'm hopeful that that will reflect around the league, like we we hoped that it would. It didn't on that particular play. Um, I, I don't know if I'm concerned. I just, you know, again, if if there's a bust in coverage, that's you know that that's a mental error, you know, a, a technique error that's you know on the quarterback that you know is going to get called. I think that's a different story. How much when a team's trying to kind of figure itself out at a stage like this, are you about staying the course, and how much do you maybe change the way you do things? Well, we'll have a plan for Cincinnati. You know, we have a plan for Cincinnati that we're trying to uh, to implement today. We'll go up practice um, and, and work and, and continue to develop and carry over the plays that we think have, uh, that have been good, that the players um, run with a certain level of speed and, and confidence and then also trying to figure out how they're going to defend us. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's, what, that's what this is about and not about – Stuff that we did in the past, and there's a lot of stuff that we've done in the past that's still being in, incorporated and used. Um, but it's about Cincinnati. It's about what we think is going to be best to, to help us win the game this week. How did you put together that plan? Or do you think I need to, to find some things to change in the game plan or in the lineup or in my message because of what we're going through? Yeah, you do that all the time. I mean, got a lot of new guys, and, and we felt like if there was changes we you know, that would – that were better, and we, we'd make them. And, you know, but this is where, you know, right now we're going to keep, you know, plowing ahead, being consistent, and we know that, uh, you know, our job is to, is to win, and nothing, nothing less. And it's when you win, stats will come. Um, but it's about winning. It's about finding a way to win. What do you say or try to adjust with Christian to try to get him back to play the way he was in camp and preseason? <laughs> I mean, do your job. You know what I mean? Like, you got to stand up here and you think that, like, you, you asked me a couple years ago, like, you know, what, what, what you can do to help a pass rush or pass rush. Like, do your job. Like, cover your man. Play cover two, reroute. Play inside number one when you're in quarters. Whether it's a D lineman, whether it's a DB, you know. And, and, you know, Christian did some some cool things, and Christian challenged, and he tackled, and you know, he had a penalty, and then they, you know, again, late in the game, I don't know, made a mistake, but you know, I'm, I think Christian's going to be uh, be just fine. You know, I mean, he triggered, he tackled. I thought he was trying to do the things that that we want him to do. You know, just had a mental error uh, late in the game. So just for clarification, you're not concerned about the busted coverages so far? I'm concerned, I'm concerned when we lose, you know, and, uh, you know, I guess how, how many busted coverages, you know, have we had, you know? The Saints, the two touchdowns. What was the one against the Saints? The one where Shahid ran right by Fulton. That, 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 that's not a busted coverage. A busted coverage when a guy thinks that somebody else is going to be over top of him, or you, you don't cover the guy. Like he was, he was covering the guy. He didn't cover him very well. I, I mean, do you disagree with that, or like the way I look at a busted coverage would be one guy thinks you're playing cloud, and the other guy thinks you're playing post safety, and the guy runs by him. And he looks around and the safety's not there. That's a busted coverage. You know, getting run by or putting your eyes in the backfield and man coverage on a double move. That's a that's a that's a technical error. You mentioned in camp, I think, how you wanted your receivers to Either way you get beat, you know what I mean? It's a so concern anytime we get beat deep and give up an X play, whether that's wherever we were where, you know, I forget who asked the question, but you know. Is it on the scheme? Is it on, you know, I mean, they, they get a good play for the defense called, or was it a mental error or a, or a technical error? 
is how we break down those those X plays. You mentioned camp, I think, how you wanted to make sure your receivers got physical in terms of like the point of separation, that kind of thing. I just want our receivers to get open as much as they right. can and catch the ball. I'm, sure. I'm not overdoing any of this anymore. Like, are, are, are you seeing enough of that so far? I, again, we we got to get open quicker and, uh, and 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 block a little longer when we throw the football and throw it quicker. Sorry, and that's what we have to do. What do you see from this Bengals front? Well, DJ Reader is an outstanding player. BJ Hill, you know, two two versatile edge players that, um, you know, they rush, uh, they drop them into coverage. Um, it, it's been the same group here for a couple years. Uh, Wilson Pratt, you know, they had some some carryover, some changeover in the secondary. In the, in the deep part of the field, but they're two young, fast players um, with, with Scott and, and you know Dax Hill. So the front is uh, they're sound, they're physical, they they play square. Uh, be a great challenge. When it comes to Tajay and his usage, how much do you think he prompts different looks from the defense, maybe passing the box a little less versus someone like Derek because of who he is? Um. I mean, I think we probably saw the same, you know, same structure. You know, I don't think we, we saw, you know, see an uptick in, in cover two when um, when Tajay's in there. And, you know, we've tried to run some of the, you know, I mean, the third down is third down. When he's out there as a third down back, it's probably a little different. So if you look at third and 10 on third down, you know, I mean, probably going to be in some split safety coverage as opposed to, when he's out there at first and 10. You get Chris Harris, the additional defensive pass game coordinator title. What does that entail beyond the, the cornerback coaching thing? And how do you think it's worked out so far? Well, you know, I mean, it's uh, Chris is a part of our coaching staff, a great addition. Uh, excited that he's here. I think he's got a great relationship with the players and uh, you know, continue to, to, to help us and as we game plan and, and all those things that everybody does here and, and contributes to to the game plan and helping on third down and the coverages that we think are going to help us get off the field. Do you make much of Cincinnati not having as much of a vertical passing game to start the year? Has the scheme looked like it's changed much at all to you or is it just the opportunities hadn't been there? I mean, they played in a downpour in Cincinnati, in uh, Cleveland. Um, you know, Baltimore did a nice job. They, they've thrown some, you know, some go balls. They've thrown some some back shoulder throws, um, and, and again, we'll have to defend the entire field. That's what they do. Um, you know, they'll make you defend the entire field. Mike, you talk always after losses about players need to play better and coaches need to coach better. What are some ways that the coaches have attacked this week to coach better? Well, trying to get everybody to understand the full concept of, of the play, you know, as we continue to, to, to grow and, and you know, work. It's about just understanding that, you know, there's an idea to the play, not just your job in, in particular, something that, that I've been harping on and trying to get to, to uh, get, get through, you know, and understand that, uh, you know, how, how, do we, how do we get them to, to play faster and, and, and understand the overall concept of every play and not just maybe, you know, blocking this guy or why are we tossing the ball in this certain play or, uh, why do you have to protect the B gap, uh, you know, versus pressure or something like that? What do you need to see about one of your tight ends? You said a couple of weeks ago that their play was a little inconsistent. What what do you need to see from them to make it more consistent? So when we, you know, when we run the football, that that they block their guy uh, when they're in protection and a play pass, that they block the edge rusher, and then when we send them out on a route. You know, they catch it when we throw it to them. Is there potential you'd start the clock on the Oda Coyer to be eligible to be called up? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's something that we could look at. You know, that's, that's certainly something that, uh, you know, would be a possibility. The Cheek struggles in, in the run game, say, are his struggles more mental or physical execution? Uh, you know, sometimes it's both. I mean, you're on the road and some of those, you know, you're away from the ball. We got to get off on the football and. You know, Chig is, uh, he's got great finish and he's got, he's, he's a sudden player. You know, again, we just talked to him about his technique and getting in on those guys like, like we would, uh, you know, 
a player of his, his skill set, uh, very willing, you know, but when an undersized player, which sometimes he, most of the time he is out there, you know, if you get your hands wide and you know, they put their hands in your chest, it, it makes it difficult. I got Tank. I got Tank here. It's uh, Pet Adoption Week here in Nashville and all across the uh, all across the country. So, you know, if you're looking to uh, add a new member of the family, you can give a loving home to a pet. Go to your local shelter in your neighborhood, and uh, maybe find a guy like Tank to give a home. Can Tank be a Tannehill? Hill? A, ta a Tan Hill household's full. We're tapped out right now. <laughs> I already have one furry friend, and uh, he's all I can handle. You see guys walk around there with cat shirts on, and what are your opinion of those guys? Yeah. You know, it takes all types. It takes all types to make the world go around and to make a team go around. Um, but definitely, you got to give them a second glance. How much do you have to, I mean, you're always a leader on this team, but how much do you have to really step up this week to get this thing back on track? Yeah, we want to get things going the right direction. Uh, obviously, I don't think any aspect of the game went the way we wanted to uh, this last week. Uh, good opportunity to come back home, uh, play against a, a good team, and, and find a way to get a win. So it's going to take our leader stepping up, um, making sure we're we're attacking every detail throughout the week and, and we're ready to go on Sunday. How do you hold? How do you personally hold this line accountable to play better? Just try to get them to do the job. You know, it's uh, knowing each person individually, right? You know, some guys can handle getting challenged a little more than others. Uh, some need a little more encouragement. Uh, just trying to you know balance that line of of knowing who the individual is and and how to best. Um, encourage them and, and get the most out of them. Uh, so, yeah, definitely, just like it is any position, right? Whether it's a receiver or running back or O line, everyone's a little bit different and, and have to understand how to best motivate them. Is there more to be had in the, in the quick game that could get you guys out of some trouble with the pass rush? You know, we've had, we've had some good plays in the quick game. Obviously, it's something we carry each and every week, and, um, you know, we'll look at you know, carrying it as, as we move forward. Well, it makes it tough, you know. If uh, you know you're having trouble getting quick passes off, then you know it makes you have second thoughts about calling your your long developing stuff and and getting the ball down the field. So uh, definitely want to do a better job of of protecting ourselves and, and being able to uh, really expand things and and get the ball you know spread across the field. But in order to do that, you got to have a little bit of time to uh, to make it happen. Well, it's huge. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're going to play good pass rushes throughout the season, right? It's not um, one week, but it's a lot of weeks it's going to happen, you know? So uh, understanding when that happens as receivers, we've got to come off the ball, right? Can't be any hesitation coming off the ball. It's a race between the pass rush and, and the receivers to get open. Um, being able to win quickly, and then if there are those contested catches, being able to, to make those tough catches and, and put the ball in a good place for, for the receiver to go get it. Real fast start, just kind of get some positive momentum early, and that is something I guess you guys have struggled to do so far. Yeah, it'd be great. You know, every team wants to go out there and get a fast start, and, and we're no different. Um, I want to attack the game and, and go out, uh, put points up early, and, and when you do that, you can build some confidence going throughout the game. But at the same time, you know, no matter what happens, you got to be able to stick with it and, and stick together and uh, find a way to, to score points throughout the game. You know, if you start fast and then have a lull. You know, what difference does that make? You know, it has to be consistent throughout the game. The Bengals have kind of had the Titans number here the last couple of years for one reason or other. How, how do you keep that from creeping into your head? Yeah, last year it doesn't matter. You know, I, I, the, whether you beat a team last year or lost to, to a team last year, um, those plays have no effect on, on this game, right? So it's a matter of, of going out, executing, um, making sure that we're on top of the details. You know, it's a big, big emphasis for us this week is, is that we're on top of the details and, and can execute and make the plays that arise for us. What sort of challenges does their defense pose? They're a good defense. You know, you look uh, solid on the edges. Uh, they push the pocket um, big in the middle. You know, with Reeder, he's a guy who's been around a while, played against him in Houston, and uh, he's a guy who's he's eaten up two players inside, uh, making things tough on the offensive line. Their backers are, are physical. They run pretty well. They're downhill um, hitters. Uh, their secondary uh, does a good job, you know, 21 in, in the nickel position. He's one of the best blitzers in the game, in my opinion, from the nickel position. Uh, he has a great feel for the game. His instincts are, are really good, you know, so I have a ton of respect for, for his game. Uh, corners are good. They're active. 
uh, safeties are, are flying around. So you look top to bottom, it's a defense that, that has talent. Uh, and Coach, uh, their, their de defensive coordinator, and Rumoy does a great job of, uh, of dialing things up. You know, they're, they're bringing a lot of pressures and, and trying to make things tough on, on the offense. So I'll we'll have to be on our toes and, and be ready for all the different things they, they can throw at us, whether it's pressures, fronts, uh, different coverages. Uh, they do a lot, so we have to be ready. With their front, what gives you the confidence that your offensive line will be able to give you the opportunity to do your job on Sunday? I have to go out there and, and believe they're going to make it happen. You know, I think that's what we all have to expect of each other is, is that you got to trust the guy beside you, in front of you, behind you to, uh, to do their job and, um, in order for you to do your job. So uh, we'll work this week in practice. We'll build that confidence throughout the week in practice and um, you know, carry it into Sunday. Did training camp lie a, a little bit? You guys felt really good about the offense. It, it was productive in, in what you worked in, in Minnesota and what you worked against the defense here. But you've gotten two games without scoring a touchdown. The protection hasn't been good. The separation hasn't been good. What's the question? Did, did, tra <laughs> did training camp did training camp lie to you about where the offense was? You know, I think there's things that we can improve upon from from early in the year, obviously, and uh, you know look, we're looking forward to continuing to to push each other and, and get the most out of each and every day as we get ready for Sunday. Going back to their defense, um, they have allowed teams, you know, getting in the red zone specifically. Maybe that's a weakness point for them. You guys have been a little bit inconsistent in the red zone. What what can you do specifically to take advantage of that this weekend? Yeah, we can't hurt ourselves. You know, I think. That's been something that's, that's hurt us over the course of this this early part of the season. Is we've hurt ourselves. We got down there, uh, maybe got behind the sticks or, or missed missed an opportunity, and, and you just can't do that down the red zone. Windows are tighter, um, opportunities are tighter. So have to be on top of our, our game, not hurt ourselves, and um, and be able to put the ball in the end zone. You know that's where a lot of games are won and lost is, is being able to get sevens when you're down there and not three. So uh, definitely be an emphasis this week. Ryan, what are the specifics in the running game that maybe you see on film that are jumping out at all that are concerning in regards to getting that part of it going? Are there any specific things that are just need to get better? Uh, I just want to be consistent. You know, I think we, we you hit a play, you see some good stuff, and then uh, maybe a couple plays where you don't see the same uh, the same execution. So uh, I want to be consistent in, in what we're doing, being able to play physical, being able to finish. Um, you know, get Derek going, get Tajay going. I think we have a good combination between those two guys, but uh, we have to give them some space in order to, uh, to let them work. So uh, I want to be consistent in giving those guys some space and, and letting them run. Where do you feel like your timing and chemistry is with Traylon right now? I know we missed a couple of weeks there in training camp. Did that knock it off schedule a bit, or are you guys kind of where you want to be? Uh, I feel good about Traylon. You know, I think uh, he's made a couple plays for us. Um, you know, we've missed a couple plays together, so uh, I, I don't think um, – I'm concerned about it. And I'm excited about what he brings to the table and, and how he can give us opportunities down the field. Uh, we just want to be consistent in making those plays and, and not being, you know, close. Is he somebody who, when he makes all those plays down the field, like you said, when you talk about limiting the long developing route concepts, where his impact can be minimized by pass protection issues? I mean, we, we got the the ball to him a few times last week whenever it, it wasn't a long developing play, you know. Um, so I think uh, he can make an impact on the game, whether it's quick game. You know, he's big, he's strong, he's physical. So if we can get the ball in his hands short, you know, that's good too. You know, he's, he's a tough guy to bring down. So, you know, whether it's something down the field or something underneath, uh, I think the more we can get the ball in his hands, that would be a good thing. When a game goes, when a game goes haywire top to bottom like it did on Sunday and you guys are regrouping, and everybody talks about accountability. How accountable are the coaches for maybe their mistakes that they made as well when they say they have to coach better? As well? Yeah, they were accountable top to bottom in the building. You know, I think uh, that's one thing that that we can hang our hats on this building is, is being accountable, um, you know, calling things as they are, right? Uh, whether it's coach coach Vrabel in front of the team, you know, maybe uh, dissecting a play and saying what went right, what went wrong, or, or coaches. Uh, being accountable for uh, whether it's a plan or, or adjustments or whatever the case may be. You know, I think it takes not only player accountability, but coaching accountability as well in order to to really get better top to bottom. And I think we have the right guys for that. So they say something about the design at times or the call at times when they're doing that? The coaches will? Nobody's be. perfect. The game is imperfect, right? Whether it's a player, a play, or or calling the game or adjustments. You know, I think 
Uh, it's an imperfect game that we're all trying to, to be perfect at, right? And just understanding there's always going to be room to improve. And, and as long as we're continuing to grow in that, we're going to be heading the right direction. On, the, on that front, uh, when a guy has a drop, do you like to go right back to him to give him a chance to make up for it? Or do you, or do you rather let him clear his head for a couple of plays before you look at it again? I want to trust my guys. You know, I think I've, uh, I've built that trust with them throughout training camp and, and our time together. Uh, and I think, you know, we all make mistakes, right? And if a guy has a drop, then uh, I'm going to trust that he's going to make it the next time. Thank you. Thank you.